From family-oriented narratives to workplace comedies, sitcoms offered an escape into worlds where the laughs were plentiful and the characters felt like family. However, behind the laughter and on-screen acting, many of the stars faced personal struggles that ultimately led to their untimely departure. Let's uncover the stories of 80 sitcom stars who died and you never knew about their deaths. Number one, Katherine Helmond. Today, we remember the remarkable life of Katherine Marie Helmond. Born on July 5, 1929 in Galveston, Texas, she was the eldest of three daughters. Raised primarily by her mother and grandmother after her parents' divorce, she attended Catholic school and discovered her passion for acting in a school play. In the world of film, Helmond appeared in three Terry Gilliam movies, showcasing her talent on the big screen. Her notable roles included the seafaring cannibal Mrs. Ogre in Time Bandits, Jonathan Price's mother in Brazil, and a hotel clerk in Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. She also lent her voice to the character Lizzie in the Cars movie series. In more recent years, she graced the screen with her presence in True Blood. Her outstanding performances earned her Emmy nominations, including lead actress in a comedy for her role in Soap, which aired from 1977 to 1981. Helmond was a two-time Golden Globe winner with nominations for Who's the Boss? and Everybody Loves Raymond. Standing at five feet two inches, Hellman's talent and dedication also earned her a Tony nomination in 1973 for her work in Eugene O'Neill's The Great God Brown. She frequently expressed her deep love for the theater. On February 23, 2019, at her home in Los Angeles, this extraordinary actress passed away at the age of 89 after battling Alzheimer's disease. Catherine Marie Helmond left an unforgettable mark on the entertainment industry, bringing joy and laughter to countless fans worldwide. Number two, Alan Thicke. You might remember him as the beloved dad, Dr. Jason Seaver, from the hit TV show, Growing Pains. But there's so much more to know about this talented actor, writer, and TV host. Alan Thicke started his career as an all-night disc jockey before becoming a writer for the CBC. He then moved to the U.S. and wrote and produced TV shows for big stars like Richard Pryor, Bill Cosby, and Kenny Rogers. He even hosted his successful talk show, The Alan Thicke Show, which became the biggest in Canadian television history. His big break as an actor came when he starred in Growing Pains in the role of Jason Seaver, after the show ended, he continued to showcase his versatility by playing different characters, including a vain talk show host on the NBC series Hope and Gloria. But Alan Thicke was more than just an entertainer. He was also a devoted father and author. He wrote two books on pregnancy and parenting, showing his commitment to family life both on and off screen. Aside from his contributions to entertainment, Alan was also an advocate for important causes. He established the Alan Thick Center for Juvenile Diabetes Research in Canada after his son was diagnosed with the disease. Tragically, Alan Thick passed away on December 13, 2016, while playing hockey with his son. He left behind a legacy of memorable performances and a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Number three, Valerie Harper. From her early days as a dancer at Radio City Hall, to her memorable role as Rhoda Morgenstern on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Valerie Harper's talent and charm left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Born in Suffern, New York, Harper's career spanned over five decades, encompassing stage performances, television, and feature films. Her journey in the entertainment world was diverse and inspiring, having made her way from the corps de ballet at Radio City Hall to Broadway productions such as Dear Liar, Story Theater, Something Different, and Metamorphosis. However, it was her portrayal of Rhoda Morgenstern that made her a household name. From the Mary Tyler Moore Show to its spin-off, Rhoda, Harper's performance as the beloved character, resonated with audiences and solidified her as a television icon. Beyond her professional accomplishments, 
Harper's battle with cancer served as a source of inspiration for many. Despite being diagnosed with terminal brain cancer in 2013, she defied the odds and became a spokesperson for cancer research, showcasing her unwavering strength and resilience. Sadly, on the morning of August 30th, 2019, Valerie Harper passed away from meningitis caused by brain cancer in Los Angeles, just a week after her 80th birthday. Her legacy, however, lives on through her impactful work and the lasting impression she left on the entertainment industry. Number four, Mary Fran. Mary, born in St. Louis, Missouri, captured the hearts of many with her unforgettable performances on television. Most notably, she is remembered for her role as Joanna Loudon in the beloved CBS sitcom, Newhart, where she portrayed the witty and delightful wife of Dick Loudon, played by Bob Newhart. Mary's journey in entertainment began at a young age as a child model, eventually leading her to win the title of America's Junior Miss and earn a scholarship to attend Northwestern University. Although she did not complete her studies there, she ventured into the world of television, hosting a morning TV show in Chicago and making her way into the local theater scene before ultimately finding her place in Los Angeles. Mary's talent and charm shone through as she made guest appearances in popular series such as That Girl, The Wild Wild West, Days of Our Lives, and Fantasy Island. Her most iconic role as Joanna Loudon in Newhart truly solidified her place in the hearts of many. The series ran for eight heartwarming seasons and Mary's portrayal of Joanna Loden earned her widespread recognition and appreciation. She also graced our screens in several TV movies, showcasing her remarkable talent. Despite the personal challenges she faced, including her divorce from T.J. Escott, Mary's career continued to shine. Her final television appearance was on the CBS medical mystery, Diagnosis Murder, in 1998, just months before her untimely passing at the age of 55. Though her passing was a great loss, her joyful spirit and unforgettable performances continue to warm our hearts. Number five, Franklin Seals. Born in the tiny St. Vincent village of Calioqua, Seals had a dream of becoming an accomplished stage performer TV star, and Hollywood actor. His breakthrough came in 1978 with the PBS drama Trial of the Moke, where he portrayed Lieutenant Henry O. Flipper, the first African-American graduate of West Point. This role earned him critical acclaim and set the stage for an impressive career. From his memorable performances in shows like Hill Street Blues and Amen to his chilling portrayal in The Onion Field, Seals proved his versatility as an actor. He was known for his ability to seamlessly transition between comedy and drama, and his passion for theater shone through in his work in Los Angeles. Tragically, Seals' life was cut short by AIDS at a time when the disease was misunderstood and stigmatized. Despite his private battle with HIV, he continued to captivate audiences with his talent until his passing in 1990 at the age of 37. Number six, John Ritter. John Ritter, best known for his roles as Jack Tripper in Three's Company and Paul Hennessy in Eight Simple Rules, was born in Burbank, California to Dorothy Fay and Tex Ritter. He attended Hollywood High School and later studied at the University of Southern California. Ritter's breakthrough role came in 1977 when he starred in Three's Company a sitcom about a single man living with two female roommates. The show was a massive hit and remained at the top of the TV ratings for several seasons. Ritter's portrayal of the comedic and lovable character, Jack Tripper, earned him widespread acclaim. In addition to Three's Company, Ritter also appeared in stage performances and later continued his success with the spin-off series, Three's A A Crowd. Throughout his career, Ritter showcased his talent as a physical comedian, winning the admiration of audiences and fellow actors alike. Unfortunately, John died at age 54 in 2003 after suffering from aortic dissection. The John Ritter Foundation was created in 2010 to honor the late star and raise awareness about the disease and how to prevent it. Number seven, Gary Coleman. 
If you followed Gary Wayne Coleman's story, you will agree with me that his story is truly inspiring. Born on February 8, 1968 in Zion, Illinois, he faced multiple health issues from a young age, including a congenital kidney defect known as nephritis. Despite his challenges, he rose to fame as an actor, best known for his breakthrough role as Arnold Jackson in the iconic sitcom Different Strokes. At just 10 years old, Coleman captivated audiences with his portrayal of Arnold, a sweet and witty young boy who charmed his way into the hearts of viewers worldwide. The show became a massive hit in the late 1970s and 1980s with Coleman's famous catchphrase, what you talking about, Willis? Becoming emblematic of his endearing character. Coleman's small stature, standing at four feet eight inches, turned out to be an asset in his career as he portrayed varying characters that were much younger than himself. His talent and charisma shone through, propelling him to stardom at a young age. However, behind the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Coleman faced personal struggles. He encountered financial difficulties and health issues, including multiple surgeries and lifelong dialysis due to his kidney condition. These challenges took a toll on him, leading to bouts of depression and financial strain. Tragically, on May 28, 2010, at the age of 42, Gary Coleman passed away after suffering from an intracranial hemorrhage following a seizure on the set of a TV show and a fall at his home. His untimely death marked the end of a remarkable life filled with both triumphs and tribulations. While his time in the spotlight may have been marked by adversity, Gary Coleman's impact on the entertainment industry and his resilience in the face of adversity will always be remembered. Number eight, Adam Rich. Adam was born on the 12th of October, 1968 in Brooklyn, New York City, and rose to fame for his role as Nicholas Bradford, the youngest son on the TV series Eight is Enough. He was so beloved in his role that he was nicknamed America's Little Brother during the show's run. Apart from Eight is Enough, Adam also appeared in popular series like Baywatch and Small Wonder, and even lent his voice to the animated series Dungeons and Dragons. His talent and charm also shined in TV shows like Gun Shy, Code Red, and Chips. Tragically, Adam passed away on January 7, 2023, at the age of 54. His death came as a shock to many, and the cause was initially cited as an accident. However, it was later revealed that Adam died due to the effects of fentanyl, a heartbreaking loss for his fans and loved ones. Despite his untimely passing, Adam leaves behind a legacy of kindness and generosity. His representative, Danny Duraney, described him as a warrior in the fight against mental illness and someone who always looked out for those he cared about. His impact on those who grew up watching him on screen is truly profound, and he will always be remembered as America's little brother. Number nine, Robin Williams. From his early days in stand-up comedy to his unforgettable roles in both comedy and drama, Williams undoubtedly left a lasting impact on the world of entertainment. Robin Williams first rose to fame with his portrayal of Mork, an alien visitor to Earth, in a 1978 episode of the hit TV show, Happy Days. His performance was so remarkable that it led to the creation of the spin-off series, Mork and Mindy, where Williams showcased his exceptional comic improvisation talents. His ability to seamlessly blend humor and heart made him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry. Williams proved his dramatic acting skills in the 1997 film, Good Will Hunting, for which he earned a Best Supporting Actor Oscar. However, his impact on the world of comedy was just as significant. He credited the legendary Jonathan Winters as a major influence on his comedic style and their bond was solidified when Winters portrayed Williams's on-screen son in Mork and Mindy. Throughout his career, Williams starred in numerous iconic films, including Good Morning Vietnam, Dead Poets Society, Mrs. Doubtfire, and The Birdcage, among many others. His performances touched the hearts of audiences worldwide and solidified his status as one of the most versatile and talented actors of his generation. 
Despite his immense talent and success, Williams battled severe depression. In a tragic turn of events, he passed away at his Northern California home. The coroner's report suggested that his death was a result of asphyxia, indicating a suspected suicide. Number 10, Paul Walker. Paul Walker's career took off in the 1990s after earning recognition from his roles in the television soap opera, The Young and the Restless, and the hit films, She's All That and Varsity Blues. However, it was his role as Brian O'Connor in the Fast and the Furious franchise that catapulted him to international fame, solidifying his status as an action star. Despite his success, Walker faced setbacks with box office disappointments like Into the Blue and Running Scared. Nevertheless, he continued to impress audiences with his performances in films like the survival drama Eight Below and Flags of Our Fathers. Tragically, Paul Walker's life was cut short in a single vehicle collision on November 30th, 2013. As a passenger in a speeding car, the beloved actor's untimely death shook the world, leaving behind not only a legacy on screen, but also a profound impact on those who knew him. Even after his passing, Walker's influence lived on through the completion of Furious 7 with the help of rewrites and stand-ins, including his brothers Cody and Caleb. The emotional tribute See You Again by Wiz Khalifa and Charlie Puth was commissioned, paying homage to the actor and adding an unforgettable element to the film. Number 11, Christopher Hewitt. In the mid-1980s, a popular sitcom called Mr. Belvedere aired on ABC, running from 1985 to 1990. The show was centered around a middle-class family of five living in suburban Pittsburgh who, somewhat unusually, had a butler. The butler, Mr. Belvedere, was portrayed by Christopher Hewitt. The character, Lynn Aloysius Belvedere, was known for his sharp wit and snarky remarks, often directed at the family members he deemed less sophisticated, such as George Owens, the father. Mr. Belvedere also frequently interacted with and guided the youngest child, Wesley, often sparring with him in humorous exchanges. Before stepping into the role of Mr. Belvedere, Christopher Hewitt had a relatively modest screen career. His on-screen appearances were limited, with only about 20 roles since the early 1950s. However, he did gain some recognition for his role in the final season of Fantasy Island, where he played Lawrence, a character similar to Mr. Belvedere. Hewitt's true passion and primary career, however, lay in the theater. He was a notable figure on stage, both as a performer and a director. One of his significant roles was that of Captain Hook in a 1979 Broadway revival of Peter Pan. Hewitt's performance as Mr. Belvedere became iconic, propelling him to a generation of viewers. The character was originally created in a 1947 novel and had appeared in several movies throughout the 1940s and 1950s. However, it was Hewitt's portrayal on the small screen that brought the character to a wider audience, making him a memorable figure in 80s television history. Despite his success on Mr. Belvedere, Hewitt remained largely a man of the stage. He spent many years involved in theater, directing reviews, and starring in various plays and musicals. His dedication to the performing arts extended beyond just acting. He was deeply involved in the creative process, helping to bring numerous productions to life. Christopher Hewitt passed away in August 2001 at the age of 80. He died at home after a stay in the hospital, as reported by the Los Angeles Times. His death marked the end of a career that spanned several decades and left a lasting impression on both the stage and screen. While many may not immediately recognize his name, Christopher Hewitt's impact on entertainment, especially through his iconic television role, is undeniable. Number 12, Aaron Morgan. Aaron Marie Moran was born on October 18, 1960, in Burbank, California, near Los Angeles, and raised in nearby North Hollywood. From her early beginnings as a child actor to her rise to stardom 
on the iconic sitcom Happy Days, Moran's journey is a captivating story of talent, perseverance, and the pressures of Hollywood fame. Moran first caught the acting bug at the tender age of five, and her first taste of television came in a commercial for First Federal Bank. She quickly transitioned to minor roles on both the small and big screens in the late 60s and early 70s. However, it was at 12 years old that she landed her breakthrough role as Joni Cunningham in Happy Days, the lovable troublemaking sister of Richie Cunningham, portrayed by Ron Howard. Over the 11 season run of Happy Days, Moran's character evolved from a young teenager to a pivotal figure on the show. Her on-screen romance with Chachi Arcola, played by Scott Bayo, became a central storyline, leading to the spin-off series, Joni Loves Chachi. While Happy Days enjoyed massive success, the spin-off was short-lived, marking a turning point in Moran's career. Following the show's end, Moran candidly shared the challenges of growing up in Hollywood, including the pressure to conform to industry standards of beauty. Eventually, she decided to step away from Hollywood, seeking solace in the California mountains after battling depression and a dwindling career. Tragically, Moran's life was cut short, and she was found unresponsive in her home in New Salisbury, IND. An autopsy revealed that she likely succumbed to complications of cancer, revealing the hardships she faced in her final years. Number 13, Alex Karras. Combined if you network the with his wife at the time of his death, Webb Susan Clark, you who was also Alex his co star on Web Harris, played 12 the show seasons ran in the NFL the with the Detroit Lions between 1958 and 1970. Of sadness. During that time, he was selected to four Pro Bowls. Of a young boy As an actor, Webster Harris Long, was known for his supporting Emmanuel roles Lewis, in the films who Blazing in Saddles with his and Victor slash Victoria and for his, his starring role as George Papadopoulos on the television sitcom Webster, George, which starred Emmanuel by Lewis. Alex Karras, Personal life and death. Football player Karras Webster's married his first wife, during the Joan Jurgensen, in 1950. They had a daughter Along together. With his wife, Catherine, Karras lived George with major health problems during his later years, parenthood, including dementia and heart disease. In 2012, he was diagnosed Alex with kidney was failure cast and was George Papadopoulos thanks to his real-life background as a professional football player. In Los Angeles player. at the age of 77. Karras played Early as a life defensive in high tackle school. for the Detroit Alex Lions Karras from was born on July 15, 1935 in his Gary, impressive career Indiana to Canadian mother Emily and Greek immigrant and he was father eventually George. Inducted Growing up, pro football he learned to play football with his older brother's state selection his transition as a football, from football player. To acting he also excelled in wrestling, in football track, movie, paper and baseball. Where he collegiate career. After graduating from this high school in 1954, Karras was visited by three coaches from the Iowa Hawkeyes football program and was flown to Spencer, Iowa, the without the knowledge of his family. He ended up doubled early Karras's on with classwork, George homesickness, was and his coach Forrest Evashevsky. In his guy. sophomore year, pounds in overweight, show, and George after and not being able to play in the season finale, calls for throwing a shoe at his coach and quitting the team. After losing his excess weight, Karras rejoined the football team in 1956. That season, Iowa won the Big Ten title in its first ever Rose Bowl. Karras finished his collegiate his career character. on a high note in Ninth American. Despite he his also won the Outland Trophy and was runner-up for the Heisman Karras Trophy. Faced significant Detroit health Lions. Challenges later in Before life. joining the NFL, in 2010, Karras was a professional wrestler for six disease, months. Stomach he was subsequently drafted by the Detroit Lions in the 1958 NFL led Draft. To his passing Karras would play for the Lions for 12 the seasons age of between 1958 and 1970, during which all for placing bets on NFL games. Formidable while owning a Detroit a bar that allegedly hosted Alex gambling Karras and organized crime. During his exile, Harris made a return himself. to professional wrestling. While After being reinstated by the NFL in 1964, he butted heads he with New Lions coach Harry life. Gilmer. Number 14, Tom Bosley. Born and raised in Chicago, Bosley was the son of Dora and Benjamin Bosley. Tom became popular for his remarkable talent and dedication to the craft of acting. He made a name for himself with his Tony Award-winning role as Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia in the musical Fiorello. This breakthrough performance showcased his exceptional skills and set the stage for an illustrious career. 
But that's not all. Tom's journey to stardom is an inspiring tale of hard work and determination. Starting from his roots in Chicago, he made the bold move to New York City to pursue his acting dreams. He worked tirelessly, took on odd jobs, and paid his dues, proving that success doesn't come easy, but is worth the effort. Now let's fast forward a bit. Tom's TV work made him a household name, and his endearing role as Howard Cunningham stole the show. He became the amiable father figure we all wish we had. His charm and talent on screen left a lasting impact, and his legacy in the entertainment industry is truly remarkable. But sadly, every story has its end. In a somber turn of events, Tom passed away at the age of 83 after a brief battle with lung cancer. Number 15, Conrad Bain. Conrad Stafford. Bain, born February 4, 1923, was a Canadian-American actor. Conrad Bain's impact on television was truly felt through his iconic role as Philip Drummond in the groundbreaking sitcom Different Strokes. Portraying the kind and compassionate father figure in a diverse family, Bain's character resonated with audiences, addressing important social issues while delivering heartfelt comedic moments. The show, which aired from 1978 to 1986, showcased Bain's talent and versatility as a comedic actor. His portrayal of the wise and caring father made him a household favorite. Before different strokes, Conrad Bain established himself as a prolific stage actor with notable performances in Broadway productions such as Candide, Advise and Consent, An Enemy of the People, and Twigs. His transition to television brought him further success with roles in daytime dramas like Dark Shadows and The Edge of Night, solidifying his presence in the medium. Following the success of Different Strokes, Bain continued to captivate audiences, starring in the brief yet impactful comedy series, Mr. President, alongside George C. Scott. Despite the show's limited run, Bain's talent and charm remained evident. After his retirement, Conrad Bain lived a quiet life in Livermore, California. Tragically, in 2013, less than a month before his 90th birthday, Conrad Bain passed away peacefully from natural causes. Number 16, Red Fox. Red Fox soared to prominence in the 1960s with his daring blue humor that pushed boundaries and captivated audiences. His groundbreaking performances on The Ed Sullivan Show and The Red Skelton Hour earned him widespread acclaim. But it was his unforgettable portrayal of the cantankerous yet endearing Fred G. Sanford in the trailblazing sitcom Sanford and Son that solidified his status as a comedy legend. The show broke down racial stereotypes and brought a fresh perspective on African-American experiences to television screens across America. Despite the success of Sanford and Son, Fox faced challenges in the 1980s, including legal battles and the disappointment of a failed sitcom on ABC. However, he experienced a resurgence with standout roles in films like Harlem Nights, where his timeless comedic talent shone alongside Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. This resurgence reaffirmed his enduring influence and reaffirmed his position as a comedy luminary. Red Fox's impact on comedy extended far beyond his own performances. His fearlessness in addressing societal barriers and pushing comedic boundaries inspired a whole new generation of comedians, including the likes of Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor, both of whom regarded Red Fox as a major influence on their careers. His pioneering approach to representation and his unapologetic comedic style continue to inspire artists to this day. As the late 1980s saw Fox poised for a potential comeback with the royal family, tragedy struck. While rehearsing for an episode, he collapsed and was rushed to the hospital. Regrettably, Red Fox passed away in October 1991, leaving a profound void in the entertainment industry. Number 17, Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen's career took a surprising and delightful turn in 1980 when he appeared in the comedy classic Airplane. Prior to this, Nielsen had built a reputation as a serious actor, 
often playing stern and authoritative roles. However, his role as Dr. Rumack in Airplane showcased his ability to deliver deadpan humor, forever changing his career trajectory. The film, a parody of 1970s disaster movies filled with rapid-fire jokes, became an instant hit. One of the most memorable lines from the movie comes when Nielsen's character responds, Surely you can't be serious with the now iconic, I am serious and don't call me Shirley. The success of Airplane opened new doors for Nielsen, leading him to star in a series of comedy films and TV shows that played off his newfound comedic persona. Much of this work came from collaborations with the film's creators, David Zucker, Jim Abrahams, and Jerry Zucker. Among these projects was the Naked Gun series where Nielsen played the bumbling police detective Frank Drebin. This character originated from the short-lived TV series Police Squad, a spoof of police dramas that was canceled after just six episodes in 1982. Despite its brief run, the show gained a cult following and led to the popular Naked Gun movies. Nielsen's ability to play absurd characters with a straight face made him a beloved figure in the world of comedy. His roles often involved exaggerated situations and slapstick humor, but his serious demeanor added to the hilarity. This unique blend of traits set Nielsen apart from other actors and solidified his place as a comedy legend. Throughout the 1980s and 1990s, Nielsen continued to star in numerous comedy films, many of which became cult classics. His performances in movies like Repossessed and Dracula Dead and Loving It further demonstrated his versatility and comedic timing. Even though he was initially known for dramatic roles, Nielsen embraced his new path with enthusiasm, bringing joy to audiences worldwide. Leslie Nielsen passed away in November 2010 at the age of 84. He died in a hospital near his home in Florida due to complications from pneumonia, as reported by The Hollywood Reporter. His death marked the end of a remarkable career that spanned over six decades. Number 18, George Gaines. George Gaines' career took off in the 1980s when he gained widespread recognition for his iconic roles in both television and film. However, his journey to stardom began long before that. Born in Helsinki, Finland in 1917, George Gaines' early years were marked by dramatic historical events, including the collapse of the Russian Empire and the turmoil of World War II in Europe. After experiencing a diverse upbringing in France, England, and Switzerland, George's passion for performing led him to pursue acting and music. His talents ultimately brought him to New York City, where he made his mark on Broadway as a part of various successful musicals and dramas, including a memorable portrayal of Henry Higgins in the theatrical version of My Fair Lady. It was in the 1980s when George Gaines became a household name thanks to his brilliant portrayal of Henry Warnament in the beloved sitcom, Punky Brewster. As the kind-hearted and supportive foster parent to the spirited Punky Brewster, George pushed himself to audiences and showcased his incredible range as an actor. However, George's most iconic role came in the form of Commandant Eric Lassard in the Police Academy film series. Lasting from 1984 to 1994, George's portrayal of the bumbling yet lovable leader of the Police Academy captured the hearts of fans worldwide. His comedic timing and charming presence contributed significantly to the franchise's success, solidifying his status as a celebrated character actor. In the 1990s, George continued to leave his mark on both television and film, showcasing his talent in various roles. However, as the years passed, George gradually transitioned into retirement with his final film appearance in Just Married in 2003. After a remarkable career that lasted over 60 years, George Gaines peacefully passed away in 2016 at the age of 98, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and entertain audiences to this day. Number 19, 
Gary Shandling. Gary Shandling was a pivotal figure in the stand-up comedy scene of the 1970s and 1980s, known for his frequent club performances and numerous appearances on daytime and late-night talk shows. His observational humor helped shape the comedic landscape, influencing contemporaries such as Jay Leno and Jerry Seinfeld. Much like Leno, Shandling often guest hosted for Johnny Carson on The Tonight Show. Like Seinfeld, he went on to co-create and star in a groundbreaking television sitcom. Shandling's first major television success came with It's Gary Shandling's Show, which premiered on Showtime in 1986 and was later rebroadcast on Fox during its early days. The show was revolutionary, known for its self-aware humor and frequent breaking of the fourth wall. After It's Gary Shandling's Show ended its four-season run in 1990, Shandling returned to television in 1992 with another innovative comedy, The Larry Sanders Show. This show, which ran on HBO, offered a behind-the-scenes look at a fictional late-night talk show, drawing inspiration from Shandling's own experiences guest hosting The Tonight Show. The Larry Sanders Show was recognized for its sharp writing and realistic portrayal of the entertainment industry and it remains highly influential in the world of television comedy. Shandling's contributions to comedy were significant not only because of his unique style and humor, but also because of his willingness to push boundaries and experiment with new formats. His work on It's Gary Shandling's Show and The Larry Sanders Show paved the way for a more self-referential and sophisticated type of comedy that has become more prevalent in modern television. Despite his professional success, Shandling faced personal struggles, particularly with his health. On March 24, 2016, he called 911 because he was having difficulty breathing. Tragically, he collapsed while on the phone and was later declared dead due to a blood clot in his heart. He was 66 years old. Number 20, Jay Thomas. Born John Thomas Terrell in Kermit, Texas, Jay's early years and education set the stage for his future success. He was raised in his Italian-American mother's Catholic religion and attended Jesuit High School in New Orleans. Later, he earned a master's degree in sociology from Jacksonville University. Jay was a proud father of three sons and his heartwarming reunion with his son, John Harding, the lead singer of the band JTX, captured the hearts of many when they appeared together on the Dr. Phil show. Jay Thomas made a name for himself through an array of memorable sitcom roles. From the lovable Remo da Vinci in Mork and Mindy to his captivating portrayal of Eddie Lebeck on Cheers, Jay's versatility and comedic brilliance resonated with audiences. His role as Jerry Gold in Murphy Brown even earned him two Emmy Awards, cementing his status as a talented actor in the television industry. In addition to his sitcom success, Jay showcased his vocal talent through voice characterizations in animated series like Hercules and American Dad, bringing various characters to life with his unique charm. Taking it further, his portrayal of a house husband in the 1990 show Married People demonstrated his versatility and willingness to take on diverse roles. Sadly, Jay battled throat cancer and his passing on August 24, 2017, left a void in the entertainment world. However, his memory lives on as an endless source of inspiration and admiration. In celebrating Jay Thomas's life and achievements, we honor a talented entertainer, devoted father, and beloved personality. His contributions to sitcoms and the entertainment industry will forever be remembered, and his spirit lives on through the joy he brought to countless lives. Which one of these stars do you miss? Let us know in the comments section below.